hello everyone in this short video we will be reviewing some of the commonly confused terms namely uh, hypoxia and hypoxemia ischemia and infarction hypertrophy and hyperplasia metaplasia and dysplasia so let's move and uh, review these commonly confused terms first hypoxia basically hypoxia is inadequate oxygen delivery to the tissues it can be due to any cause any cause leading to inadequate oxygen delivery to the tissues means hypoxia uh, the hypoxia can be secondary to ischemia or hypoxemia or it can be secondary to, to uh, high altitude if the person is at high altitude anything which leads to inadequate oxygen delivery to the tissues is hypoxia including hypoxemia is one of the causes of hypox hypoxia you can see the arrow here hypoxemia is also one of the cause of hypoxia hypoxia is inadequate oxygen delivery to the tissues in hypoxia you'll find clinical findings of cyanosis confusion cognitive impairment and lethargy these these uh, cognitive impairment and lethargy are seen at a later stage now let's move on to hypoxemia when we are talking about hypoxemia it basically we are talking about oxygen dissolved in the plasma yes you look at the arrow there plasma hypoxemia is the oxygen dissolved in the plasma what happens is when you breathe oxygen is go it goes through your alveoli it gets into the capillaries and before being attached to the hemoglobin it is in the plasma and the oxygen dissolved in the plasma gets into the hemoglobin it gets attached to the hemoglobin so before attaching to the hemoglobin whatever the oxygen is there in the plasma is uh, uh, referred to as oxygen dissolved in the plasma and decreased quantity of that is hypoxemia so you will see hypoxemia at high altitudes where the inspired oxygen itself is decreased so you're getting less oxygen being delivered to your alveoli and hence less oxygen will be there in in the plasma so that is a very logical thing but i remember the first point hypoxemia can lead to hypoxia because ultimately at the tissue level less oxygen is being delivered so that is hypoxia and hypoxemia let's talk, talk about something very important uh, ischemia and infarction Ischemia is basically decreased blood flow through the organ. The blood flow can be blood inflow or blood outflow. Blood inflow is arterial blood supply. Blood outflow is venous outflow. So whenever there is decreased blood flow to the organ, it is ischemia. Infarction is basically ischemia plus necrosis is infarction. Infarction is an extension of ischemia. You can say it is irreversible kind of ischemia where necrosis has set in. I will review it once again. Ischemia is decreased blood flow to an organ. Example would be coronary artery atherosclerosis. Remember when there is atherosclerosis, there is decreased blood flow through that organ. And if the uh, atherosclerosis covers 80 more than 80 percent of the coronary diameter that leads to severe kind of ischemia uh, if we talk about infarction that is total block of the blood supply is infarction it's like myocardial infarction is a classic example of infarction infarction is ischemia with necrosis you can remember it this way infarction is ischemia with necrosis let's move on this is a, a sign of atrophy Atrophy is just decreasing size of the organ and the weight of the tissue. Broadly speaking, it is the size and weight uh, which decreases is uh, atrophy. Atrophy can be secondary to uh, uh, hydronephrosis as in this example. When there is chronic hydronephrosis, it uh, puts back pressure on the medulla and the renal cortex. So medulla and renal cortex decrease in size. They are reduced in weight the size of the tissue is decreased that is atrophy there is no also you should remember that in atrophy there is no inflammation it is it is like uh, programmed like uh, it is not something infection or inflammation or high amount of neutrophils going up there atrophy is a non-inflammatory process 
Next is the two other con confusing terms that is hypertrophy and hyperplasia. Hypertrophy and hyperplasia, this very important example being given here is DPS, we'll discuss it. Uh, first, hypertrophy is increase in cell size. Whenever the organ has to work against a super normal force, the organ tries to adapt to that force so that it maintains its normal work. For example, the left ventricle of the heart adapts to aortic stenosis or increased afterload due to any cause like hypertension by increasing in the cell size of the left ventricles. The left ventricular muscle increases in size so that it maintains the left ventricular output. So any change in the force, the physical force will lead to hypertrophy. Uh, when you talk about hyperplasia, it is, is it, it is increase in the number of cells. It is increase in the number of cells, not the size. It is increase in the number of cells. A common example of mixed hypertrophy and hyperplasia would be endometrial uh, the growth during menstrual cycle is both hypertrophy and hyperplasia. A specific example of hyperplasia would be BPH, benign prosthetic hyperplasia. And you must remember this last line here, it is hyperplasia and not hypertrophy. If in any book it is written hypertrophy, it is incorrect. It is BPH is benign prosthetic hyperplasia. It is a hormone-mediated process and it does not lead to any increased risk of carcinoma of the prostate. Let's move on the last two slides. Last one slide, metaplasia and dysplasia. Metaplasia is an initial change. For example, if uh, the stress is changed to the uh, lung epithelium of a smoker, initially it will lead to metaplasia because the uh, epithelium of the uh, trachea is trying to adjust to the new stress that is uh, the carbon particles in the smoke. Over a period of time, it will lead to dysplasia. Another example of metaplasia is Barrett's esophagus. What happens in Barrett esophagus is normally it is lined by squamous epithelium due to acid reflex to, uh, to uh, act against or to better uh, behave against that acid. The esophagus goes glandular metaplasia. This is initial part. And when the metaplasia is present in an organ for a long period of time, it can lead to dysplasia. Dysplasia is basically disordered cell growth. And it is dysplasia predisposes to the cancer. The example being squamous dysplasia of the cervix, secondary to human papilloma virus infection. This is more, more this infection is one of the most common causes of uh, cancer of the cervix. But uh, due to screening procedures, the incidence of cancer due to cervix has decreased in recent years. So this is the review of uh, the most commonly confused terms. For more of such videos, kindly subscribe to our channel.